power. We trust you this morning, oh God. Father, we may not even see the way we look and we can't see how we're going to get where we need to go, but God, we know that you're there and you're leading us. You are the way maker, the miracle worker, God, that we trust in today. Oh God, you are able to do all things. So Lord, we put in your hands, into your hands, Lord God. We take our hands off and we place them into your hands, oh God. All the things that we're we're longing for today. God, whether it's healing in our bodies or our families or relationships or whether it's financial healing that's needed or other things, Lord God, that, that we need in our life, Lord, we can't do it, but Lord, we place them into Your hands now. The miracle worker, the way maker, the one who is able to do all things. And Lord, we trust in You today. God, we rely upon you for our help, for our hope, Lord God, for everything. God, help us to take our hands off and to walk by your Spirit. Because that's when things get accomplished. That's when things happen and miracles take place is by your Spirit, Lord God. Father, help us to not walk according to our own might, our own strength, but God, according to your Spirit today. Father, I just pray, Lord God, your healing touch, your power would just emanate this morning, God, into this place. Touch lives. Heal hearts. God, those that aren't able to be here because of sickness or whatever they're dealing with in their life, Lord God, help them right now in Jesus' name. Bring the help that is needed. Be the miracle worker, the way maker in their life today, Lord, I pray. Lord, we place all these things into your hands now. Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. He is the way maker and the miracle worker, isn't he? Oh, come on. You can say it louder than that. He is the way maker and miracle worker, isn't he? He does amazing things when we trust in him, when we put our whole trust in him. And, uh, you know, God's got a plan for everything in our lives. Nothing catches him off guard. Amen? What's happening with Pastor Lorne and Beth didn't catch God off guard. He knew all about it. He had it in his plan. And so we've just got to go along with what his plan is and what his way is. Amen? Just gave us something more to pray about, didn't you, Pastor Lorne? <laughs> During our prayer and fasting. But that's all right. That's what God's got this. And so we are trusting in Him. So today, I I want us to focus on prayer and fasting. Um, Now, I I pray and I hope that most all of you, if not all of you, have decided to pray and fast with us over the next 14 days. Um, It's something that's important. It's something that Jesus instructed us to do, so it must be important. Amen? So turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 5 through 18 this morning. And I want to read what Jesus had to say about prayer and fasting. Because if we're going to learn about prayer and fasting, there's nobody better to learn from than... Jesus, right? And so let's, uh, let's just hear what he has to say about prayer and fasting. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 18 says, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray... Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees you in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, did you, read, did you hear that? And when you fast, he didn't say, and if you fast. He says, and when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus gives us instruction on prayer and fasting. So it must be something that's very important. It must be something that we should do. I know that while Jesus was on this earth, as, uh, the uh, Pharisees came and they asked, and they said, well, why do John's disciples fast? And why do the Pharisees fast? But your disciples don't fast. And he said, well, when the bridegroom is with you, you don't, you don't fast, you, you party, Right? I mean, when you're at a wedding, you're, you're not fasting, you're celebrating. And he said, while the bridegroom is here, my disciples don't need to fast. But when I'm gone, they will fast. Okay? So he wasn't saying we shouldn't fast any longer. He didn't say that, no, that's not a part of what you need to do. He was saying, right now, while I'm here on this earth, my disciples don't need to fast. But when I'm gone, they will be fasting. And when they fast, he gives instruction. So let's look at this today and let's, let's just talk about this for just a few moments. Prayer and fasting, to me, from what I see in this, are a private matter. When you read in verse 6, it says, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Then he says in verse 17, But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. Now, does this mean that we should never pray in public? No. Does that mean that I should hide the fact that I'm fasting and not tell anybody and not let anybody know? No. It's just that we do not need to make this a public spectacle. It is about a private prayer between us and our Heavenly Father. It is about us fasting to bring us closer into intimacy with our Heavenly Father. Denying ourselves and pushing in to God. Amen? So it is a private matter. It is, it is something that we need to, to have, not just a, a public display, because what was happening was the Pharisees, they would, they would get out on the street corner and they'd be in all their, their robes and dressed up as nice as they could, and they'd stand on the street corners and just herald out their prayers to God while people were laying in the street in the gutters next to them. They wanted to be seen by men as being righteous, pious, religious. That's what Jesus is condoning here. Don't do that. Don't do that. He's condemning it, I should say. Not condoning, condemning. Condemning that. Because we don't need to be standing up in front of everybody and trying to pray so that everybody can see us. But once again, Jesus prayed publicly many, many times. There are many times that Jesus Himself would pray, Father, do this so that they might see. He, he had many prayers throughout Scripture, throughout the Gospels, where He, he prayed publicly to help us to understand how to pray. 
I think, was a lot of it. Instruction. But also just to publicly proclaim his prayers to God. But for the most part, God wants us to pray in secret. Not trying to be, well, you know how I I pray. I do this and I pray that. And I'm going to, you know, God listens to me because I do this and I pray all these. And they were praying just repetitive prayers. Just things over and over and over and over and over again. I don't know about you, but when I get in a conversation with somebody that's just going over and over and over the same thing, I just kind of zone out. And I think that's what Jesus is saying. Look, God, God knows what you need before you ask. So you don't have to just keep going on and on about it and telling him the same thing over and over again. Ask, and it will be given to you. Amen? Now, it doesn't mean that we ask one time and that's it. Because he also stress, stresses that we need to ask and keep on asking. Now, we don't ask all at the same time, every time, but we just keep asking over and over again through over time, and God hears us and will answer our prayers. So, we need to understand that, that prayer and fasting are a private matter, that it is not something for everybody to make known. But we also don't need to hide it. Amen? When I go to a restaurant... We pray. If I'm fasting, I may mention to my waitress that I'm fasting and because I'm doing something different and I need to do my menu a little bit different than what I normally would do. Because they may ask, well, are you a vegetarian? Well, no, I am definitely not a vegetarian. (laughs) I'm fasting. And this is, you know, this is part of what, you know, what we're doing. And so I just need some help trying to pick out the right, you know, uh, meals for that. But it's not something that I'm trying to brag about. Well, I am fasting and so I need, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to get. You understand what I'm trying to say? But, but we do need to keep it as this is, you know, we don't need to walk into church, you know, with our hair all disheveled and our face looking bad and our clothes all a mess. I'm fasting. Oh, God. I don't know if I can make it another day. Because that's what they would do when they were fasting is they wouldn't, as they said, anoint themselves and, and all this. That was their way of, of washing and getting all dressed up to go out. Okay. We need to be looking like we normally would. We don't need to have our face all, you know, caved in and look like we're, you know, starving to death. We need to take a shower and look good when we go out. And realize that, you know what? God's got this. I'm, I'm fasting because I want to be closer to God. I want to, I want to get my focus in on Him. I want to have my Heavenly Father who is in secret hear me. And I want to be so focused in on Him that I'm not focused on my flesh. I'm not focused on my my body, on what I need and what I want and how I want to eat. I'm not thinking about where I'm going to the restaurant today. Amen. Hallelujah. As we do sometimes. But it is a private matter. It's something that God says, you know what, if you will do it in secret... I will reward you secretly. But then it's also what I would call a personal matter. Prayer and fasting are a personal matter. It says in in verse 7, When you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Well, the prayer and fasting that the Lord is calling us to is a very personal one. I can't do it for you, and no one else can either. God wants to hear from you. Not only that, but He wants to give you clear direction for your personal life. There are things that He is wanting to reveal to you to do, because prayer and fasting aren't just about getting what we want. It's about getting instruction from God on what He wants. 
But see, if we come into prayer and we just come and we just say, give our laundry list and say, okay, God, I need you to save this person and this person and this person, and I want you to heal this one, and this one's sick, and this one needs that, and God, I need a new truck, and I need a new car, and we need a new house, and we need, you know, all these new things, and God, we need you to provide finances, we need, okay, thanks, God. And we're gone. Have we had a conversation with God? No, we've spoken to Him, but we haven't had a conversation with Him. Because a conversation is two ways. So it's not that He doesn't want us to come and give us all of those requests and all of those things, but then he said, we, we need to be able to stop long enough to say, God, what do you want to say to me today? What is it that you're speaking to me? What do you, I need to do to help see all of these ac- things accomplished? There may be something that he's wanting you to do. There may be something he wants you to give up. There may be something that he wants you to go and do for somebody else. There may be something that you need to do. But you can only do it when you hear his voice when you make it a personal conversation with Him. Not only that, but fasting is not just about us denying ourselves so that we can give our, our request more clearly to God. I want you to go back with me into Isaiah chapter 58 because I want to read through this chapter of what it says about fasting. Because so many times I think we just think that it's just a, man, that's old-fashioned, or that's just something that they did back in the Old Testament. That's under the law. That's just, but it's it's more than that, folks. Fasting is something that that we need to do because there's God uses this to accomplish so much when we do it the right way. Isaiah 58, starting in verse 3, says, Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Now, this is the children of Israel speaking to God. This is is through a prophecy of Isaiah where he's talking and, and he's sharing what God is hearing from his people. Right? They're coming to him and saying, why are we fasting and you don't see it, God? Why are we sacrificing so much and you don't hear us? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Wow. That's God's response. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice be heard on high. Is such the fast that I chose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Some of us might say, well, yeah, that's that's what it is. But then he says, will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? No, that's not what he wants. This is what he wants. Is not this the fast that I chose to loose the bonds of wickedness? To undo the straps of the yoke. To let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and spreading wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light shine in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. 
and your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. If you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own way, or seeking your own pleasure, or talking idly, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken." Wow. That is the kind of fast that God calls us to. It's not a fast of me just taking time to just put myself aside and just to sit and pray and humble myself before God and, and beat myself and, and show, oh, look how, how, how much I'm giving up for you, God. He says... The fast I'm calling you to do is to break the bonds of, of the yokes of bondage upon people's lives. To go out and feed the hungry, to help the poor, to, to do things that will help people. It's more than just denying myself, it's doing something that will benefit the kingdom of God. Amen? So, Prayer and fasting are a very personal matter because through this time we discover what God's desires are for our life and what we are to do. So when you go and you pray and you fast, it shouldn't be about all my needs and what I'm wanting and what we're wanting, but God, what do you want me to do? Who do you want me to help? Where can I be that light that shines in the darkness. How can I do that, God, more effectively? What are you wanting me to do? How do, you, how do I help people that are hurting and hungry and, and in need around me? What is it that you're wanting from me, God? You see, when we go to fasting and prayer, it's not about us, it's about Him, and it's about what He wants. But it has to be personal. It has to be an intimate conversation with Him. Because if we go in with just our laundry list of what we need... That's all that we're going to bring. And it's not the fast that he's calling for. So during this time, please spend time listening. Listening for the voice of the Lord. Some of you may say, well, I've just never really heard the voice of the Lord. I believe you have. I believe God is speaking to each and every one of us. It's just a matter of, are we putting ourselves in a position to listen? Are we at a point where we're ready to hear what He has to say? He may not speak to you in an audible voice. I've maybe had one time in my life where I felt like it was close to audible. But I believe God speaks to me all the time. There's impressions that He gives to me. There's, there's thoughts that I never would have thought of before that come to my mind. There are things that He will show me in Scripture that I've never seen before. That as I'm praying, I look at the Scripture and I read things that, that He just brings out things to me that I'd, I've never seen there before. And He speaks to me through those things. And that's how He wants to speak to you. So will you take time to listen to Him? Listen to His voice. He wants us breaking the yoke of bondage in people's lives. And we won't know how to do that unless we listen. So prayer and fasting are private and personal, but also prayer and fasting are purposeful. I see several purposes for prayer and fasting to, to make our requests known to God. That, that is important. That is a purpose for prayer and fasting. We do need to make our requests known to God. Although He says He knows what we need before we ask, He does desire for us to ask. Why? Because the second purpose is to build relationship with Him. 
I believe that He wants us to, to have a purpose of building our relationship with Him. Folks, that's how you get to know people. If you really want to know a person, you can't do it just on Sunday morning in a church service. You've got to say, hey, do you want to go to lunch today? And sit around a table and begin to talk. You've got to be with them in a small group where you, there's conversation, where people are sharing their testimonies or talking about the Lord, and they, somebody shares about what took place in their life, and you, you really begin to get to know them. But getting to know somebody comes through conversation, a two-way conversation. And God wants us to be so close to Him and intimate with Him that we hear His voice on a regular basis throughout the day. Not just when we take time to, to sit in our, in our room and pray, but throughout the day. And we have to build that relationship. Prayer and fasting are what help build that in our lives. Another reason for prayer and fasting is to break the yoke. Through prayer, we break down strongholds in heavenly places. Do you know that you have the authority to break down strongholds in heavenly places? Do you realize that how much authority you really have in Jesus' name? Through fasting, we break those strongholds of our own flesh that gives us the faith to pray to break the strongholds in other people's lives. Amen? See, if we have a true fast like what is described in Isaiah 58, then prayer and fasting will move us, move us to make a difference in the world around us. It will move us to make a difference in the world around us. Another purpose in prayer and fasting is to receive a reward from God. Somebody go, oh. did you know that you can receive a reward from God? That you're able to desire that? That you're allowed to say, God, I, I, I want a reward. Now, it's not like he's going to give you a piece of candy because you came and, and prayed today. But it's when we pray, there is a reward of relationship. There is a reward of just this intimacy. There is a reward that begins to take place in our lives that just, that just is so satisfying that you won't even understand until you do it. But he says... If you pray in secret, He will reward you. If you fast in secret, He will reward you. There is a reward to praying and fasting. And that is okay for us to desire. And to want. I want a reward. Now, I don't mean God come and pat me on the head and say, thank you for coming and praying today. I just want that reward of relationship with Him. That the answer prayers, the intimacy with Him, the things that I, I desire is Him. And that's the reward I will receive. When I get to heaven, the reward I'm going to receive is seeing Jesus. Amen? I, I, the crown that I get, I'm going to throw at His feet. Because it's not about me, it's about Him. It's about the fact that I am rewarded with the very presence of God in my life. Fasting and prayer bring that, that presence of God into our life in a greater way, a, a, an understanding, a, a knowing of that presence of God like never before. And I can desire that. Amen? Prayer and fasting are disciplines that should be a regular part of every Christian's life. Amen? Pastor Lauren, if you'll go ahead and come back up. I'm about to finish up here. But it is a discipline. What does that mean? It means it is something that my physical body does not want to do. My natural man does not want to take time to pray or fast. 
I need to acknowledge that. I need to understand that. It's just like my physical body does not want to exercise. My physical body just says, no, I don't want to walk that much. I don't want to do those things. That's, what, that's my physical body. Some of you, Jason, his physical body says, let's go work out. Let's go. I want to work out again. Okay, now there are people that, are, that have that. But for me, it's, it's not there. I have to discipline myself to exercise. And as you can tell, I'm not too disciplined in that area. I need to be more disciplined. But prayer and fasting are also a discipline. It is something that your physical body does not want you to do. It doesn't want you to go and spend time because you're going to get there and you're going to think, oh man, I could be doing this, I could be doing that, I got these things to do, I got to get here, I got to do these things. We, we think it's a waste of time. That's what our physical body tells us. But let me tell you something. It's just like if you start to exercise, the more you do it, the better you feel. The better you are. The healthier you are. It's the same thing with the disciplines of prayer and fasting. But it takes discipline. Jesus shared at the beginning you know was ridiculed sometimes by those religious leaders around him and in Luke chapter 5 verse 33 through 39 it says and they said to him the Lord the, the, the disciples of John fast often and offer prayers and so do the disciples of Pharisees but yours eat and drink and Jesus said to them can you make wedding guest fast while the bridegroom is with them. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from an old, a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled. And the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one after drinking old wine desires new, for he says the old is good. The bridegroom has been taken away and it's time for his disciples to fast and pray. And to pray like never before. We live in a world today that is evil. I don't know how else to describe it. There is so much dissension, so much contention, so much animosity and, and anger and frustration and and just bitterness and envy and strife that are going on in our world today. We need to pray. We need to fast. We need to have that discipline. But just as Jesus then went into this parable about the fact that you don't put a new piece of cloth onto an old garment, or you don't put new wine into old wineskins, the reason is because when you put new cloth that hasn't been shrunk yet onto a, a piece of cloth that already has, it's going to shrink up and it's going to tear apart. It's going to be broken. If you put new wine into an old wineskin, that old wineskin is already stretched all that it's going to stretch. And when you put that new wine in there, it has to expand a little bit. And when it does, it's going to burst the old wine skin. What he's saying is, is we got to get our hearts prepared. We don't need to have hearts of flesh any longer. We need to have hearts that are attuned to the Spirit. And it takes us coming before the Lord and saying, God, make me a new wineskin. 
Make me that new wineskin that you can pour new stuff into my life. That you can begin to pour the new, the fresh things into my life. God, I don't want to be in an old rut, an old routine. I, I don't want to be in that any longer. I, I want to have freshness in my life. As we begin to do that, as we begin to fast and pray and He pours that new wine into us and, and that freshness of His Spirit into our lives, man, it's just going to be awesome. Because just as they said, no one after drinking old wine desires new. For He says the old is good. But yet we got to have the new to become the old. Amen? We need that new fresh wine coming in so that we can drink of the old, what God has for us, all the things that He has for our lives. Hallelujah. I'd ask you to just stand with me this morning as we conclude the service. Tonight we're going to do this training, and I, and I really encourage you, please make time to come out tonight, 6 o'clock. We're going to be down in the fellowship hall. I wanted to make it more of a of a casual atmosphere, but we're going to watch a video ser sermon from uh, Scott Wilson, and and then we're going to put into practice some of the things that are that are being taught to us on how to pray more effectively, folks. It's time for us to fast and pray. This nation needs us. The scripture tells us if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways and pray, then I will hear from heaven. And then I will heal your land. This nation needs men and women of God to pray. To pray like never before. To fast and to ask God to just come and bring a great awakening to this nation. If we don't do it, it's not going to happen. Amen? He's waiting on us to get serious and to begin to pray. And then He will come. Then He will heal our land. It is possible. It's not going to come through us protesting. It's not going to come through us putting out all of our opinions and views and our ideas out there and what we think is right and what we... It's a matter of us praying. We need to pray. Father, I just ask You right now, God, to help us to be a church that prays and fasts. God, help us to make it a discipline in our lives. God, that is ongoing. God, that is something that will build relationship with You. God, that is so personal and intimate, Lord, that, that we have these conversations with You that, that lead us to go and do new ministry and new things in our community to help people who are hurting and broken. Lord God, that, that we would have that intimacy with You so that we would see the, the bondage broken in people's lives. Lord God, that we would see, God, our nation healed God, that we would see, God, You come and bring a great revival and an awakening in our country like never before. God, help us to pray. Help us to realize that it's our responsibility that if we don't do it, then this nation is doomed. God, that our children are, are debt bound for destruction. God, we are called to pray. It's me. I have to do it. Not just others, not just those who are super spiritual, but God, all of us coming together and praying and fasting and believing You for great and mighty things to take place. God, help us. Help us, Lord. Because our flesh is strong sometimes. Oh God, it wants us to do the wrong things. It wants us to be selfish. It wants us to, to not pray and to not fast and to not do the, the things for others. But God, I pray that You would just make us new wine skins, Lord God, to fill up 
with your spirit to do great and mighty things, Lord. God, to do new things, new things in our lives, in our families, in our homes, Lord God, in our community. Father, we love you today and we just thank you for the power of your spirit that's in this place. And what you're going to accomplish through us, God, in 2020 is going to be beyond what we could even imagine right now. Because we're going to fast and we're going to pray and we're going to have intimacy with you and we're going to hear your voice and we're going to be obedient and follow after your voice and do what you're asking us to do. Oh God, we love you today and just thank you. Thank you for your word today. Help us in this discipline of fasting and prayer, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Hope you will come back out tonight, 6 o'clock tonight, 6.30 on Wednesday night. 6 o'clock tonight, 6.30 on Wednesday night, both in the Fellowship Hall. God bless.